Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Emma Borders and today we are going to be talking all about shifting. Shifting is a really, really useful skill to have and so we're going to talk about what is shifting, the technicality of how to shift, and also how to not get lost on the fingerboard when we're going up and down the neck. So make sure you stay tuned and don't forget to hit that like button below. That really helps me out. So let's get into it. for us to know when we're talking about shifting is you need to know what position you are in okay so basically as you might be able to guess most of us start out learning the mandolin in first position and first position is when our hand which is also called our frame is all the way back so when our first finger covers the first two frets on the mandolin and we're stationary here our hand is all the way back that is first position. That's what typically we start out learning. And first position is great. However, there are many, many, many more positions that we can learn on the mandolin. Second position is when we move our whole frame, our whole hand shifts up two frets, okay? And the reason why we call it second position is literally because it's the next position you can go into from first position, but also because we put our first finger, we slide our first finger up to where our second finger was, meaning second position. So let me show you on my mandolin what that looks like. So this is first position, right? My, my first finger is covering the first two frets on all strings. When I move up two frets, my whole frame shifts up and that includes my thumb, and my arm, everything shifts up. Sometimes I see people leaving parts of their frame behind. So say somebody is shifting up and their hand goes up, but they leave their thumb behind back here. That's not good. That is not what we want. That'll get you really out of whack. So we wanna make sure that we move our whole entire hand, our whole entire frame up when we are shifting. So now my first finger is on the fourth fret, and that means that I am in second position. And when I'm in second position, this is now my bass. So I'm gonna play a B major scale in this position just so you can see what it looks like. So that is second position. Now, we don't typically use second position just a whole lot because it kind of feels weird kind of feels a little bit awkward. The finger spaces can get a little bit wacky, but the one that we do use quite often and probably the position that I use the most is called third position. As you might guess, third position is when our first finger shifts up to where our third finger would normally be. And that's going to be the fifth fret. So our whole frame, once again, our whole entire frame shifts up to where our first finger is now on the fifth fret and that is third position. I can play a C major scale in third position and here's what that would look like. I use third position a lot for scales, a lot for tunes. It just is really helpful to know where you're at and again first finger is always on the fifth fret in third position. Now, as you might guess, we can continue to go up. There's something called fourth position, which again, we move two frets up so that our first finger is now on the seventh fret. That would be fourth position. Fifth position would be, again, two frets up above from fourth position. position is when things kind of start to get really, really, really small. <laughs> the mandolin, the, the frets up in that area of the mandolin are just really, really tiny. And sometimes in some cases, yeah, I actually might go all the way up the neck and be playing something up there, but I typically don't stay up there for very long because it's, it's so high. And if you have 
a different style of mandolin than me, you might have even a little bit of a harder time getting up to those high notes if you have a scroll or something that is keeping your hand from being able to reach all the way up there. Okay, so now that we've talked about positions and you know what positions we can shift into, let's take just a regular G major scale and we are going to play that scale for three octaves and we're going to add some shifting involved in this scale. Now, if you've never shifted before, don't worry, I'm going to walk you through it and I will also put the music on the screen so that you can follow along with me. So we're going to start just with a normal G major scale in first position. Okay, now in order to play the second octave, what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift up into third position now. Just a reminder, third position is gonna be our first finger on the fifth fret. So when we get to this F sharp, in the first octave, we are gonna shift up to third position. So our first finger is gonna play the fifth fret. Okay, and then we'll continue up the scale from there. Okay, so let's just talk about that little shift. So we're shifting from second finger on the fourth fret to first finger on the fifth fret, okay? So that is from first position into third position. Now, a couple things that are super important to remember when we are shifting is that first, we have to make sure that our frame, our hand is relaxed and is loose because if we're gripping here, if our thumb is gripping the neck and our hand is a little bit clenched, then you'll notice that when you try to shift, it's gonna be really hard, really hard to, to shift up the neck, especially as we get this faster and as you play songs that are fast and you have to make those shifts very, very, very quickly. If you are clenched, then that's not gonna happen super easily. So we wanna make sure that our hand, our, our thumb, our wrist, just our fingers, everything is relaxed so that we're able to easily move up and down the neck. And we need to keep this in mind pretty much anytime we're playing, but especially, especially when we're shifting. The second thing, which I think I mentioned before, is that we need to make sure that our whole hand, our whole frame moves up. We don't want to leave anybody behind. And I like to think of my, my thumb and my first finger so these guys, these two joints, they move together. They control the rest of the hand. So if the thumb moves up, that means the rest of the hand moves up. If, if the thumb moves down, that means the rest of the hand moves down. We don't have any of the thumb moving and then the hand or the thumb moving back and then the hand. It all has to move together at the exact same time. So let's practice that. Let's practice going from second finger fourth fret. Okay, so we're playing this note. We're going to release the pressure. Okay, so we're going to release the tension here on this second, on the second finger. And we're going to shift up. Okay, so nothing should be pressing right here. Everything's nice and relaxed as we shift up. And then we're going to put our first finger down where it's supposed to be. We're going to add that pressure back. Just like that. So really, if I do this in slow motion, this is what it looks like. And we want to try to keep as clean of a sound as possible. So that means that when we're shifting, Again, we're not keeping the pressure down. So we're not sliding. A slide would mean that we would be keeping the pressure on the string as we move. And if we did that, we would get this sound. Right? And that's not what we're going for here. We want to make sure that we release all pressure, we shift, then we add that pressure back down. So we don't hear, we don't hear the shift. The goal is that we want to make our shifts 
as seamless as possible so that they're not detectable. That's, that's the goal. So again, let's practice here. Pressure off, shift up, pressure back on. Okay, awesome. Super, super cool. So let's speed that up a little bit. So again. Now, as you can hear, there is a little bit of noise as I'm shifting. And that's because right now I'm going really slowly. It's almost impossible to get it completely seamless. Again, like I said, that's the goal. But in reality, it's really, really, really difficult to, for there to be no sound as we're shifting. But the faster we get, the smaller that little space is going to become. And so, you know, we still want to make sure that we, we take off all pressure and we shift quickly and efficiently right to where we right to where we're going. Now that's another tip is that you don't want to overshoot your shift. <laughs> you don't want to shift up and then have to go back. It's much easier to go a little bit slower and make sure you get right to where you're going as opposed to shooting over, over the note where you're supposed to land and then trying to, to find it by going back. It's supposed to be one fluid motion. So we shift right up to the note and then we plant. We don't shift past it. You never want to go past the note that you're aiming for. You want to go right up to it and then and then put the pressure back down. So let's do this really slowly from the very beginning of our G major scale. Here we go. Okay, so that is a very easy, simple shift. I hope that you are you are learning something here. Maybe that is your first shift that you've ever done. So congratulations if that is the case. One other thing that I want to make sure to mention that I see a lot of people do is as they're leading up to a shift. So again, we take this F sharp and they're in anticipating this shift, right? So they're anticipating it and they end up choking off the note right before. So they're playing the scale, it's nice and smooth. We're hearing every note, but then all of a sudden we get, we get a little staccato note in the mix right before that shift. So I'll do that again. It's small, but do you hear how the sound chokes off before the shift? That is not what we want. That does not sound smooth. It's not sustained. And we want to keep every note as sustained as possible and the, the shifts as smooth as possible. So you want to make sure that you are keeping your finger held down as long as you can before you have to shift, okay? Hold it down. And that's where, you know, you practice it and practice it. And the more you do it, the easier it will get. But we want to make the shift as fast as possible. We don't want the shift to take a whole bunch of time because if the shift takes a lot of time, then that means it's taking away time of our notes ringing out. And we want to keep our notes ringing out for as long as possible. So that means we need to make the shift quickly and efficiently. Let's go ahead and go to our next shift for our third octave. So it's actually going to be very similar to what we just did. So if we start here, right where we just shifted and we play in third position, I'll put it up on the screen. going to shift one more time to our next G note. We're going to shift from our third finger in third position to our first finger up on this G note, which I think is the 10th fret. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it is the 10th fret. And that means that this would be sixth 
position. So pretty high up there. Pretty high up there. So I guess I do use sixth, po sixth position a little bit more than maybe I, I think I do. But again, so this shift is going to be from our third finger on the ninth fret to our first finger on the 10th fret. So our whole frame, again, our whole frame is moving together up. We're not leaving our thumb behind. Everything is moving together. We're, we're nice and relaxed. There's no clenching, so we can easily just slide right up to that 10th fret. And again, we wanna make sure that we leave our third finger down for as long as possible before we shift. And we make this shift cleanly and efficiently. And then we're gonna play the very last octave of the scale in sixth position. Yes, and as, as you're playing up there, the frets do get very, very small. So it's super, super important that you are playing right on the very tips of your fingers because if you're not, it's gonna be really hard to get, to get your fingers in those tiny little frets up there. So play right on the tips. Now we are going to shift back down. Now for the shifts back down, we're gonna be shifting from our first finger back down to our third finger. So it's the same shift that we did coming up, except it's just in reverse. So instead of going from third finger to first finger, we're going from first finger to third finger. Now I kind of find this one maybe a little bit more difficult than the one going up. I'm not really sure why. But all of the same principles apply. Now here, we have to make sure that as we're shifting back down to our third finger, our first finger lands where it needs to. So here's what I mean, as opposed to just shifting and aiming for our third finger to get where it needs to be like this, and maybe our other fingers are kind of all over the place. We need to make sure that as we're shifting, our first finger goes back to that fifth fret. And that's because that's the base. That's where our frame needs to be because we're shifting into third position. And in third position, our first finger is on the fifth fret. So we need to make sure that as we're shifting down, that is where we land. And then we place our third finger where it needs to go. For instance, so that's in slow motion shifting all the way back, then adding the third finger. Okay, that is gonna be our shift for the second octave. And then we just continue as normal down, this, down the scale. And then we do the exact same thing for this very last octave. We're gonna shift from first finger in third position to second finger in first position. Again, we are shifting from third position back to first position. So we need to make sure that our, our frame goes back to that first position starting place. So our first finger goes down where we get into first position and then we put our second finger down. Okay. And again, we're holding our first finger out as long as possible before we shift. We're letting off all the pressure as we shift and then we're adding that pressure back down when we put our second finger down. And then we play the rest of the scale normally. Let's go ahead and play that whole scale, the whole three octaves with all of the shifts slowly. If you have your mandolin, then I encourage you to go ahead and practice with me as I play this. Two, three, four.
one other thing to mention is your thumb placement as you get up the neck and something that I've noticed for me is that sometimes my thumb isn't over the neck sometimes it ends up being a little bit behind the neck um, almost kind of pressing on the underside just a little bit not all the way under like that but just slightly slightly over to the side and that is totally okay because we do have two strings to press down we have to get enough leverage so that we're able to press down those strings and that there's no buzzing and if that means that your thumb needs to be a little bit under the neck that is totally okay that's how mine is sometimes especially as i get you know up in sixth position and that one looks a little bit different because all of a sudden you know we have the body of the mandolin that we have to deal with all of a sudden and so if your thumb ends up being a little bit behind the rest of your hand sort of like this so you see how this is where my hand is and again we typically want to keep these two joints right here we typically want to keep those together but the higher we get we have to do things a little bit differently because we have the body of the mandolin so if you can keep them the if you can keep them together that's great but if you end up having to bring your thumb back in order for your hand to reach that is totally okay it's not a big deal and so don't worry about that too much all right well congratulations you now know a three octave g major scale with two shifts you know how to play in third position and you know how to play in sixth position i hope you found this helpful and if you have any questions or any comments you can feel free to put those down in the comment section below and i will do my best to get back to you i always enjoy hearing just just what you guys are working on and questions that you might have and i actually might do a follow-up video to this one just talking about different positions and what our fingering looks like in those different positions because we didn't really get into that today so let me know if that would be something that you guys are interested in don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss another video from me i will see you guys next time thank you so much for watching